So this should be the end of the section 3.1 and I brought out a blank graph that I'm going to take the time and draw a vertical line. Vertical line means parallel to the y-axis. So I'm just going to draw a random vertical line and I want to talk about vertical lines, what the points are on the vertical lines and why they're, what kind of equation they have. So there's a random vertical line that goes through 4 on the x-axis. So this is some just generic vertical line. I picked one that's easy to work with for myself. Now I'm just going to label some points on this vertical line. This point right here is the point 4, 0. And it's a point on the x-axis, so it's definitely the x-intercept for this line. There are infinitely many points. Usually when I sketch a graph, I label three points. Let me label another point. I went going backwards. I drew the line, and now I'm graphing points, which is kind of odd, but yeah, it is what it is. So I maybe even do more than three points. So there's a generic vertical line. It goes through four on the axis. It has an x-intercept of four. If you look at the points that I've drawn so far, it should be obvious what they have in common. Here's another point on this line. Every point on this line has the characteristic that it's four comma some number. Vertical lines don't have y's in their equation. All vertical lines can be written as x equal to some number. And this vertical line, the equation of the generic vertical line that I just drew, is x equal to four. It just is perfectly named because when I look at the points, every point has an x, the 4 for an x. So this is important. Vertical lines they all can be written as x equal to some number. The equation doesn't have a y. The equation, if I'm going to graph and get a perfectly straight up and down line, the equation only has an x. It does not have a y. The graph has an x-intercept. It crosses the x-axis. So it crosses the x-axis. So it has an x-intercept, because an x-intercept is where the graph crosses an x-axis. All vertical lines have an x-intercept, because all vertical lines cross the x-axis. However, vertical lines do not cross the y-axis. They're parallel to the y-axis. And because they do not have, don't cross the y-axis, it does not have a y-intercept. This is going to be the case for every vertical line. We're going to beat vertical lines up in every section. And we're going to get rules for... Um, you know, lines, equations that have x's and y's, and those rules aren't going to fit for vertical lines. So vertical lines, the equations are, can be written as x equal to some number. The equations don't have a y. The graphs are straight up and down. They cross the x-axis, so they have an x-intercept. They don't cross the y-axis because if they have to go diagonal to get to the y-axis, they miss the y-axis. So that's a big deal. I'll probably save this sheet for the next section even. Now let me draw a random horizontal line.
all the lines that we've graphed so far, they haven't been horizontal nor vertical. They've got some sort of you know, angle to them in some sense. Let me just draw a random horizontal line. just to illustrate some features of a horizontal line. So there's a horizontal line. It goes through three on the y-axis. This point right there is a y-intercept, and any all points on the y-axis are written as zero sum number. So that's one point on the graph. I'm gonna back into some more points. Here's another point on the graph. There's a point four, three. Here's another point on the graph. There's a point seven, three. Here's another point on the graph. Here's the point negative five, three. And hopefully you start to see a pattern. If you have a horizontal line, all the points have the same Y. The X's can be any number, but the Y's can vary. All horizontal lines, their equations have a Y, but not an X. And this random horizontal line that I drew the equation is y equal to 3 because every point, the y is 3. So for horizontal lines, all horizontal lines can be written as y equal to some number. And all horizontal lines, the equation won't have an x. If I have both an X and a Y, I get some sort of slanted line. If I just have an X, I get a vertical line. If I just have a Y, I get a horizontal line. The equation, the graph will cross the Y axis. It's so it has a Y intercept. but it's parallel to the x-axis, so it does not cross the x-axis. So it has no x-intercept. Big deals, big deals, big deals. This little bit of knowledge you should have written down or memorized because it's going to come up. Um, it's going to come up when we do the homework now, and it's going to come up in section 3.2, and it might even come up in section 3.3. I don't know if it makes it there, but it's going to cause us a lot of havoc um, because equations that only have y's and don't have x's, or equations that only have x's that don't have y's. We're going to get lots of rules, and the rules are going to apply for equations that have x's and y's, but not one that's missing a variable. And having this handy is going to help us understand theoretically what we need to do. So I'm going to keep these and use them when I do my next lecture. So the next questions ask me to find three points. Plot the points, sketch a graph, use the graph to find the x-intercept. If it doesn't have an x-intercept, say there isn't one. And use the graph to find the y-intercept. If there's no y-intercept, say there isn't one. So what do I need to do for my number 34? My number 34 is an equation that only has an x. There's not really algebra I can do to find points. I have to get the points logically. And the logic for this problem